I almost got overwhelmed by the sense of responsibility, you know, to be honest. And, but there's a lot of adrenaline that gets you through it. And it was the most topical thing. Every morning, uh, I'd watch this, uh, channel nine news and there'd be another doom and gloom story about how much worse it was and how many more sickness cases there were and how much, um, more negativity there was in the world about it. And so it was incredibly topical. Uh, the adrenaline got me through a bit though, but I think the thing I learned was if you are good, uh, good leadership in a crisis does not happen by chance. It's preparation and the preparation around airlines are really good at crisis management in an operational sense. You rehearse it time and time and time again. Qantas are brilliant at it. Virgin were brilliant at it. And it's just for that black swan operational event. That is translatable to a more broad economic global crisis like this. Not entirely, but it does set you up well. What set us up really well is that we had uh, the radar, which is their version of the PNA, 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 um, which talked about the things that we prioritize above all else. And it just set the scene for, you know, in that communication was always important in that, uh, you know, caring for our people was always a massive factor of that. No matter what, no matter how tough it gets, let's make sure that people are treated with respect. Um, make sure that safety is always number one, you know, so all of those things that were in our radar, um, which w at the core of it was to be the airline people truly love, right? not just like, truly love. So let's make sure we're that to everyone, even during the crisis, right? So that guided us. We were well prepared. We had a strategy for the airline and we were well trained in crisis management. And in that, uh, we fast tracked, it was in the pipeline actually to go with the meta product, the workplace product. Okay. And we got our, IT, we brought the IT guys in and to their great credit, we said, you haven't got six weeks longer to get this in. We need it in tomorrow. And so we launched it in the middle of the crisis and everyone jo joined up to it. And so what I learned is that calmness is very, very important. So if you are the guy, calmness matters a lot because if I can't hide panic or hide stress, how can I get them to believe that I'm heading us in the right direction? So a lot of energy actually went in to being calm. Even the tone that I talked, making sure I didn't get too animated was, was a big part of that. Uh, making sure that there were key messages, no matter who the audience that was repetitive throughout the entire thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, even if it was an Alan Jones interview on 2UE or uh, the ABC breakfast show or Carl Stefanovic or any of those journalists, um, always think your people are watching. So as well as jumping on workplace, weave the messages to your people through the media. Uh, so that was very important learning there and make sure you bring all of the stakeholders on the journey with you. So the amount of phone calls I was making to government all around the country, the amount of times I spoke to premiers or, you know, the head honchos in Canberra was, you know, compared to what I do now, I was off the charts. Mm -hmm. And that was really important in making sure that you demystified the stuff they were hearing, you know, so if they were hearing stuff that wasn't true, you could, you could knock it out pretty quickly. So calmness, clarity, definition of success, in that circumstance. So the, the time frame of that success period is very short compared to your normal vision, but make sure you're clear with a definition of success. Um, make sure you communicate, 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 even when there's nothing to say. So I know you haven't heard from me for an hour. I've just jumped on to tell you, there's not a lot to tell you. Um, but the one message I'd like to give right now is that we're still waiting on a response from the federal government on this so that they're not left guessing. And so I've had a lot of uh, people who worked for me at the time saying that they're, and, and remember, we were talking to 8,000 people who weren't working for us at that time. They were at home, isolated. Mm -hmm. And so these stories of their whole family sitting around the live updates uh, were prevalent. And so we, we were helping reunite, make them feel connected at the same time because they weren't in the workplace. So all of those lessons are, are hard earned. And I'd say to anyone going through a crisis, and Anna Bly taught me this during the floods and she was brilliant and was the sort of gold standard for any leader in the world that wanted to do uh, or wanted to lead through a crisis. 
she communicated beautifully. She communicated authentically. She did it regularly and said a lot and didn't just say a lot of words. She gave a lot of substance and being as open as I possibly could was a very important part of that process. And there are some things you just wish you could say that you can't without getting yourself in trouble. But I really pushed the boundaries.